الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم ولا فهم لنا إلا ما فهمتنا إنك أنت الجواد الكريم We are going to um, show إن شاء الله our method in رقية So this method starts by explaining the symptoms How do we know that someone has a jinn or sihr or عين نظر problem so there are four symptoms that show that. The first symptom is blockages in life. That means think don't, things don't work, you can't get a job, your money gets wasted, you can't get married, you can't have children, you can't study, you can't pass your examinations. Whatever you try to do is getting blocked. Unusual and repeated blockages. Until yourself you understand that there is something not normal going in your life. There is an invisible force that is stopping your life from going forward and that is what is sihr, what is sorcery, black magic about it is an invisible force who is attacking your life as Allah Taala says وَمِن شَرِّ النَّفَاثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ we ask Allah to protect us from the evil of those who blow on the knots so they attach knots and they say satanic things and that is the sihr that is going to attach your life so it can attach a man's life so it will not work it can attach a woman's womb so she will not have any children. It can attach a student's mind so he will not under understand anything at school. The second symptom is unusual health problems. For example, if you eat sihr, it is going to give you pain in your stomach. The sihr is drops like water they put in the food or drink and when you drink it or eat it, it will stick in your stomach or intestines like glue. And your body will feel that there is uh, there's a foreign something strange there. It's going to attack it. The acids, digestive acids will attack it. And you will feel burning in your stomach. Like if you are scraping your skin because it is itching you. And you continue scraping until it becomes red. And then it becomes bleeding. And this is how you can get an ulcer. Because of sihr. Without any physical or medical reason to have it. And this, these digestive problems will last for years and years. And you can avoid some kinds of food or take some medicine to have some kind of relief, but the problem will always be there and not explainable, not understandable by medicine. For example, if you walk on the sihr, it will give you problem in your legs and your skin, some kind of eczema that is called psoriasis, and that medicine has absolutely no explanation of why it comes and then it spreads and it lasts and there is absolutely no treatment for it and sometimes it disappears so doctors can only see it happening and not, not being able to understand or to act on it also sihr black magic makes various pains like having headaches, back aches, leg aches uh, chest pains or chest being pressurized it also gives pains and problems in menses and sterility uh, and importance for men and it can also make some difficult diseases, some severe illnesses can be also due to sorcery. Allah Taala mentions these health problems due to magic and genes in Quran saying like the one the devil shakes in position. So also epilepsy can be due to jinn and sihr. The third symptom is unusual mental states. That means getting angry too much, especially in a couple. So you can recognize problems in a couple that are due to sihr because their fighting is not based on anything. There's no real reason for fighting. They get to argue for very stupid things, and for meanless things. And the more they discuss about it, the more it gets worse and worse and worse. And when they separate, they cool down and each one will regret and say, why did I do this, why did I say this? And the love, they will feel love again. And as soon as they come back together, so the problem will come again. Because that sihr is to separate them, 
So when they are separated, it stops working, and when they come back together, the seher starts working again. And also, uh, seher makes depression, sadness, and how you know that this is not a normal sadness, a normal depression, is that sadness, depression comes by problems in life, by having failures in one's life, by going through difficult hardship, so that will affect the person and he can lose confidence in himself, he can lose pleasure in life, he can lose hope, because he has gone through very difficult conditions. But someone who's got everything, he was fine, and suddenly he stops his activities and he starts closing uh, himself in his room and not wanting to do anything, without any visible reason, so this is not normal, and that is due to sorcery and jinns. And also having fears uh, and having doubts, not being able to concentrate and to learn things, and hallucinations, hearing, th hearing voices, seeing things, and it can go all the way to madness. So in these unusual mental states, Allah Taala says, فَيَتَعَلَّمُونَ مِنْهُمَا مَا يُفَرِّقُونَ بِهِ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَزَوْجِهِ They learn from them how to separate a man from his wife. So this is the sihr that separates a couple and changes the mental states and the feelings of the people. And the last of the four symptoms is nightmares, bad dreams. So naturally the sihr and jinns come in the dreams. Allah Taala mentions that in Quran in Surah Al-Anfal where Allah Ta'ala says الشيطان, it is to remove from you the impurity of shaitan and this concerns the battle of Badr the night of Badr many Sahaba had wet dreams and were on Janaba in the morning and Allah Ta'ala said that that is shaitan he wanted, he made you those dreams so that you will be on Janaba for the battle and Allah Ta'ala sent to rain to purify you from that bad effect of shaitan so this is how sexual dreams are part of the effects of sorcery and jinns. So concerning the nightmares, so there is a very close relation between sorcery and nightmares. That means the way they do, the way they work on you by sorcery will appear in your dreams. For example, if they put the sorcery in a graveyard, and that can be done by many different ways, they can just go to a graveyard and, and uh, bury the sorcery, in the sand, they can find a grave that is already uh, dug, and they will uh, they will uh, uh, bury the sorcerer inside. After one day or two, they will a man, a person will be buried in that grave. They can also take the sand from the graveyard and use it to work to make the sorcery. They can take the water for washing the uh, the mayid, the dead person, and use it or or cut a piece of his kafan to make the sorcery, they can also put it inside the kafan. They also sometimes dig out dead people and use their bodies uh, to make the sorcery. Anyway, it all comes back, it calls, comes to one thing, to the sorcery made in cemetery. So that will have an effect on the person, on the person to whom the witchcraft has been made, that he will become like dead, that means he will be always tired, even if he sleeps in the night, he wakes up tired, and uh, he's also depressed and not having any happiness and any desire in life any, and just living f uh, from day to day and not having any look into the future and he would be dreaming about dead people either dead people he sees them alive or live people he sees them dead he sees them dead or he can see himself dead or he can see graves or he can see funerals so by any means he would see things related to death in his dreams when they put the sorcery on a high place like a tree or a mountain, so that will have uh, an effect of surrounding the person so that he will go round and round in his life instead of going forward and achieving things in his life. And the second effect will be to lift his mind over reality so he will be imagining things like being afraid of things or being doubting about things. That way he will be living in uh, imagination and not having a practical and pragmatic thinking and he will see in his dreams heights either he sees himself climbing or flying or falling or going down or slipping by any means he would or in an airplane but so by any means he will see himself in heights in the dreams when the sihr is put in water like river or sea so that is made to lose someone's life 
as if his life is going like water so without any benefit so this is how his years and his life goes by or as if he's trying to build something in the water so whatever you try to build the water is taking it away and his money will go like water it's like if you take money in your hand water in your hands so by the time you raise your hands it's all gone so this is how his money will go and he would see water in his dream so he can see rivers he can see himself crossing water he can see himself swimming or being drowned or living under the water or rain falling on him so by any different way he would see water in his dreams when the sihr is done with a lock that is to lock someone's life to stop something happening in his life so he will see in his dream he will see himself being chased uh, like this lock attaching him he will see people behind him chasing him sometimes he will run sometimes he cannot run sometimes he keeps on running and running and he will wake up so tired and he will never be caught up by those people and he will it will end up either him waking up or flying away or falling down or falling in water and if he faces them he will be fighting and fighting and fighting with them so these be, being chased and fighting in, in dreams shows that the sorcery has been made with a lock. <clears throat> when the sorcery is made by knots, and that is to attach someone's life, either his job, either his marriage, either having children, either his thinking, either relations between people, so he will see snakes in his dreams. Like the sorcerers of Pharaoh that turned the, the ropes and the sticks into snakes. And when the sihr is done with the footsteps of the person, that means the dust he has passed on, they take the dust, they make sihr with that. So you will see in your dreams your, yourself, you will see vehicles, cars or airplanes or boats or any kinds of vehicles. So you see yourself in a journey, you can see yourself having accidents in the car or the car not having any brakes. So by any means you're going to see... Uh, uh, travel means uh, or yourself traveling when the sihr is done with underwear underwear is used to make sihr and this is mostly for women so they will see children or babies in their dreams as children and babies are related to breastfeeding and when the sihr is done with something related to sex like the pants or pubis hair or they send the jinn to put the sihr in the sex of the person so that will have sexual effects on the life of the person and he will have excessive sexual dreams and when the sihr is done with the menses blood of the woman so that will mostly affect her that she cannot stand her husband she will not like her husband anymore that will change her feelings towards her husband that can also be used to stop her getting pregnant so every month when she has a delay in her periods she thinks maybe she's pregnant so she, she will see the blood in her dreams and in the morning she will get her periods so it can also be used to stop a woman getting pregnant and she will see blood in her dreams and when sihr is made in toilets or is done by waste by human waste so that is done so that the person become disgusting and he will see toilet in his dreams or human waste in his dreams it can come in different shapes but that's how it comes in the dreams so this is how the fourth uh, symptom is the bad dreams is very much related to sihr and jinns so this diagnostic with these four symptoms has many advantages the first advantage is that it is logical and rational diagnostic anyone can understand it anyone can analyze his own situation and understand what is happening to him second point there is no need for genes angels or ghaibi process does not need any process that uh, that one cannot understand that is hidden that is secret that is strange and that can be not islamic uh, that can be not clear so no need for any no need for jinns for example we don't need to read on the patient and expect expect a jinn to speak by his mouth and ask that jinn what is the problem of this patient and because most patients the jinns will never speak through them and even if the when the jinn speak 
it will not be easy to get a good information from that gene. So we don't need genes, we don't need any other process to understand what the person has, just discussing with him, understanding and analyzing his symptoms to understand the problem he has. And the four, third advantage that these four symptoms are mentioned in Quran, as I, as I, I have told you, the verses of these four symptoms. And another advantage is that the four symptoms draw the boundaries between what is normal and the unseen and the ghaib world. So the, the common point in these four symptoms is that it is the line that makes the difference between what is normal and what is not normal, what is paranormal, uh, what is ghaibi, what is sihr and jinn and ayb. So for example blockages Anyone can have a problem, can have an accident, can, can lose his job, etc. But when these problems are unusual and repeated until yourself you understand that this is not normal. There is something blocking your life. You cannot say every time, oh it just happened or this is bad luck. No, there is something that is stopping you going forward and an invisible force blocking your life. That is sorcery. That is black magic. And also the unusual health problems that doctors don't understand, medicine does not understand, whereas in our days medicine is so much developed that we cannot, we can hardly imagine any tiny thing that medicine will not understand. And the third is mental cases, mental problems that are not usual, not explainable by usual life problems. And these also bad dreams so also bad dreams that you know yourself that you did not imagine that dream it's not yourself that is imagining that so these four symptoms draw the boundaries between what is normal and not normal so now you know that you you have something unusual going into your life and needs a treatment of rupia and the fifth advantage is that there's no need to distinguish between jinn and sihr black magic and ayn nazar uh, evil eye. There's no need to distinguish between the three because the treatment will be the same. For example, if you have headache, we're going to make cupping on your head or on your neck to remove that headache with the ruqya. Uh, and if, if that headache is due to jinn or sihr or nazar, ayn, there's no difference. We'll still, the treatment is the same. Now, what is the treatment? The basic treatment. The basic treatment, you're going to take some water, enough water to wash for 12 days and drink, let's say a gallon of 25 liters or 18 bottles of a liter and a half. And you will read on them, Fatiha, Ayatul Kursi, Qul Hu Allah Ahad Al Falaq Al Nas, and three special verses to remove the sihr. It is the verses of Musa alayhi salam with the sihr of Fir'aun where Allah Ta'ala says that Allah destroys the sihr by his words in Surah A'raf, Surah 7 verses 117 to 122 and then Surah Yunus, Surah 10 verses 81 and 82 and Surah Taha, Surah 20 verses 68 to 70 so all these verses you read them all 11 times on that water once you have read that on the water, that water insha'Allah will remove the jinn, the sihr and the evil eye. So what are you going to do that water? You drink from it and you're going to bathe every night with a 1.5 liter bottle of that water. So you can warm it up, you can take a shower before if you want and you're going to empty that water on your body. Huh? And you must collect the water in a basin to throw it in the nature or in a clean place so it does not go uh, in the uh, it does not go in the waste. And also you're going to spray your house uh, with that water. So you keep on washing that way for 12 days, and you spray you, all of your house with that water. So you put it in a sprayer, or you can do it with your hand, and you spray all the surface, the walls, the roof, the ground, the doors, the windows. If you have a shop or workplace or vehicles that have problems, you can spray them all with that water, inshallah it will go. So what you must understand in this method, first is that reading Quran on water to drink and wash 
and to spray your house is much more efficient than simply reading in your house. The difference between both is it is like if you are hot and you want to cool yourself down and you use a fan and now you cool yourself down with a shower. So a shower will be much more efficient than a fan to cool yourself down and this is how reading the Quran on water and drinking and washing and spraying your house will be much more efficient than only reading in your house. So the protections you get in hadiths are based on reading and maybe wiping your body with your hands so that is protections but once you are hurt once you are hurt the protections are not enough and you need treatment and this is how this is why you must move on to this washing and water procedure and also these verses I have given you are the fundamental verses of Ruqya so you can add much more verses that are in hadith or that are in Ruqya books or whatever the verses you want or dua of of uh, healing the, of Rasulullah and you can add more than 11 times anyway the more you read on the water the more it will be efficient so even if you have a big problem you will read more and more and more until it will be enough to solve your problem and even if someone cannot read all these verses so whatever you can read you're going to read it more and more and more on the water until it will be enough to solve your problems inshallah and when you read on the water, in the same time you can read on oil, olive oil, or habasada oil, or any oil that is convenient to rub on your body, to massage with. And after you wash with the water, you rub your body with that oil. So all the time the oil will be on your body, the Qur'an is continuing, the Qur'an will continue working on you. So it is best to do that before sleeping, so the Qur'an will work on your body all night long. And you should insist on the places where you have pains or skin problems.